here. I'll kick off the um, embargo bit, if that's all right. Um, can I just, on an admin thing, check with Alan Wynn's injury, what he's actually done? Has he re-dislocated his shoulder? What's the detail on that you can give us? So I don't have the detail, to be honest. I, I just know that the minute uh, we were told that um, he won't be available, uh, our focus has been on the players that are available, to be honest. But um, look, he, he he's going to have surgery and he's going to be up for a number of months. And, um, you know, as I say, he will be back before the end of the season at some stage. OK. When it, with him and Ken Owens, obviously been titans of the Welsh game for a long period of time now, both injured at the moment. Where do you think you are with succession planning, which I guess is going to be a key part of your stint of, as well as coach with lots of guys in their 30s now? Yeah, certainly um, second row is an interesting one because we've lost two overseas and then um, Alan went injured. So, you know, Will Rollins was one that we targeted because we knew that uh, we don't have a lot of genuine big men. And uh, so it's great that he's in the fold. Uh, Adam Beard is going from strength to strength. So I, I think you can see a bit of the future there. Um, and now it's a, it's a matter of um, getting that next group of players. You know, uh, Seb Davis needs to step up now. We need players. Obviously, Ben Carter has been thrust into it. So, look, um, it, it's not as if we've got, you know, dozens of second rows out there with, with a genuine international height. So we've got to work hard with, that, with what we've got and, and look use their strengths. In terms of a hooker, yeah, probably, uh, we, you know, you anticipate you're looking at number two, number three, number four. We're probably a little bit further down the chain there with, um, you know, Elliot D, Ken. Um, and you look at young Dewey Lake, who is, uh, is on our radar big time. And uh, unfortunately, he's been out, hasn't, hasn't played this season. So, yeah, it is. Uh, and, you know, that's why we've gone and we've, we've brought in Bradley Roberts from, from Ulster. So uh, we're having a good look and making sure that uh, hopefully we're building those stocks because the World Cup's not too far away. Just bring it back to the weekend. Um after that defeat last Saturday, the pride would have been tinted a bit. Is that the rocket up the guys this week to, I know you've got players coming back into it, but put some pride back into the jersey and perform far better than you did last week against the box? Well, I thought we performed very well last week up until 18 minutes to go when probably that last quarter was always going to be a concern for us with where we've come from as a squad and the squad that we've put together for this particular that particular one-off match and where New Zealand had come from. So, look, I think a lot of the predictions were for that to happen, but I thought, um, you know, the, the penalty after uh, we were looking to exit from the, from the try that we scored was a big moment in the game. You know, they scored from that and um, sort of... Uh, the momentum we should have got from the crowd and, and, and scoring that try, I think that was a big moment in the game, which really the floodgates at that point opened. But we, were, we got a lot out of that first three quarters of the game. Um, at 28-16, I think um, we were very proud of that performance to that date, given where the two sides had come from. So, you know, you can look at the final scoreline and write the performance off, but we're, we're looking at the positives that came out of that, and uh, I think we'll be better for that. Just the last one. Obviously, you want to win every game you're trying to coach, but with South Africa and then Australia at the end, do you need, in your mind, to beat one of them to sort of justify the work you're doing and the progress you're making? Oh, look, we're, we're realistic. You know, we're working hard every day um, with, a, with an end goal in sight. And that, you know, if we can't have our, you know, if we've got 15, 16 players missing, what we're looking at is who can we, um, who, who can we build into the program, if you like, and learn about. Uh, and build depth. I would think development as well as trying to get results uh, with the squad we've got is really, really important. So the development um, side of it probably grows in terms of a, you know what we can gain out of this particular autumn series. But obviously, every time we take the, the field, we know we're representing our country and we know that uh, a win is what we're after. So nothing changes in that respect. Results is a results-driven game, but... Uh, you know, you've got to deal, uh, play the hand that you dealt sometimes. And at the moment, this is about some development opportunities for some players and obviously other more experienced players are, are wanting to hold their positions and push on and play at a World Cup. So there's motivation for everyone in the squad. There's no doubt about that. And um, we'll be doing our utmost to, to get the right result. Hi, Wayne. Um, Lewis was quoted this week criticising the game plan from the Lions this summer, suggesting that a, a different approach would have beaten the Springboks. Uh, what, what's your reading of the debates around the style versus substance, especially with the Springboks? Do you agree with Lewis? Is that a sentiment that's shared in the camp? Well, I don't know if he was asked a question or it was, uh, was sort of 
pushed down that route and he's just commented because uh, I don't think he's a young man that would get up and criticise Warren or the way they played the game. But certainly from our point of view, uh, it's irrelevant what the Lions did. Um, that's a different squad, different management. From our point of view, I think everyone's it's clear to see what we're trying to do. Uh, we're building our game um, with you know the focus on the World Cup and how do you beat these sides. And uh, I think you've got to score a few points. And so we're looking to play a little bit more than certainly the Lions did. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, the Lions, one or two decisions would have won that series, you know, by, by players in critical stages in, in the game. So the argument there is that uh, that style of game could have easily won the series. There's been questions um, over whether or not these concerns sh- should have been raised during the tour rather than after the fact. I mean, as, as coach, do you encourage disagreement from your players if they disagree with your tactics or philosophy? Sorry. Sorry. So, um, no, I'm not, I'm not really interested in talking about the Lions tour. No, no. So, the question is do, you, as a coach, do you encourage, I mean, are you a coach that encourages disagreement if a player thinks that your tactics or, or philosophies are not where they should be? Is that, do you encourage that sort of conversation? He probably wouldn't last long, would he? Um, no, look, uh, on, a, on a serious note, uh, we have open dialogue in this group. Uh, communication is massive. Um, and the players, we always want their input. Um, you know, we sit down with a strategy group and we sit down as a coaching group with those uh, those players in that group as to how we're playing each week, what the roles are, and questions are asked and answered. And so everybody knows and has clarity in their role. Um, and look, I can only speak on this group here. Um, you know, questions do get asked from time to time. We encourage that because at the end of the day, you want your players going out on the field, believing in what we're doing, understanding their roles, having total clarity. Um, and so, yes, it's encouraged. And just finally, um, the box have got a relative rookie at 15. Um, what's your reading of Damien Willemse? Do you see him as a potential target under the high ball? Any, any thoughts on his skill set? I think he's a very skillful player. Um, I think they've got a very, very good squad out. Um, I like him as a player. I think he's uh, has great attacking skills and ability. Um, so, yeah, look, he, he's... You could make a number of changes in the in the Springbok side, and it's still going to be a very very tough opponent. Obviously, thank you, thank you, Wayne. If I could just go back to Alice Jenkins briefly, I just wonder: were you watching that day in 2018 when he suffered that injury? Oh, um, I remember the injury. Um, I wasn't at the game, but I'm pretty sure I would have watched it. What what were your sort of feelings and emotions around that? I know you weren't attached to him at that time, but it obviously stirs emotions when things like that happen. Yeah, well, I've had a similar injury myself, um, so I know what it's like. It's not pleasant, and it's a, a long, hard slog. Um, in terms of uh, a similar sort of match, I recall New Zealand playing Argentina many years ago and the great Michael Jones being out for a lengthy period of time. And just to see those injuries that... You know, you got to look away at times because they're not nice, and you know, you know, through personal experiences what they have to go through. Um, and I think until you have one of those injuries, you don't quite realise it's very, very tough. And so for Alice to come back now, actually to be playing against the same opponent, it's, uh, you know, for him, it's it's going to be a very, very special day, and um, I'm sure he's going to relish getting out there. Yeah, just lastly, it obviously cost him a place in the World Cup and then who knows after that with, with the Lions tour. Do you sort of sense that could be a motivating factor for him over the next two years? Oh, look, he's a very motivated young man, isn't he? Um, to come out the other end of what he's had to go through and he's had a few setbacks along the way. Clearly, um, he's a very intelligent rugby player. He, he knows what he wants to get out of the game. He knows what he can offer the game. He's uh, he's smart enough not to come back if he didn't feel he could he, he could contribute at the top level of the game. So, look, I think um, you know he's probably got two years of watching and frustration, and he's just going to be excited to get out there and and he is motivated to do very well, and he'll want to hold his place in the team. And and yeah, I'm sure he'll want to push on to, to bigger and better things. Wayne. Um, you, you mentioned Adam Beard earlier. Can you just expand on how important he is now for you in, in that position and, and how he's developed as well over the last couple of years? Yeah, look, I'm full of admiration for Adam because we, we left him out of a squad and, and um, asked him to go away and work on parts of his game. And he is a great example to the others in the squad that have disappointment. You take it one of two ways and uh, he, he responded the way we wanted him to. He's worked hard at his game. He's come back and his attitude is fantastic. He's, he leads our line out, so he'll be in charge 
charge of the line out on the weekend. Um, will Rollins will take the defensive side of the line out off um, off Al, um, but he he knows that uh, there's a big void to be filled, and Adam really wants to step up step up his game and uh, take on more responsibility, which which is fantastic. Um, yeah, I think uh, you'll see a big game from Adam on the weekend. You've got him and, and John Davies and Dan Bigger, who are the obvious leaders, and, and you've talked about everyone stepping up. Who, who are the other players who are impressing you in, in that regard in terms of leadership abilities? Well, certainly in the forwards, you, you know, you've got um, Adam, as we've mentioned, and, and Alice Jenkins are the ones that are going to have a, a role around leadership on on the field on the weekend in the forwards. Uh, and with the guys that you've mentioned, you've also got Gareth Anscom, if he comes into the game, you know, obviously a lot of experience there. So there are guys there. Uh, in, ch- in, in terms of the scrum, we're putting more emphasis on Ryan Elias, uh, obviously Wynn Jones when he's out there, um, and uh, of course Thomas Francis. So th- there's still plenty of experience there, but it's, it's uh, removing the main man, if you like, and uh, it's a, a collective that'll take over from where Alan Wynn left off. Just finally on Bradley Roberts, it, how long has he sort of been on your on your radar, and how how did that sort of scouting process or, or that that system come about to get him in? Yeah, we have people that uh, are out there looking at uh, who's eligible, um, who qualifies for for the different countries, and that came on our radar um, after the, he was put into the Ulster squad last season. Um, so we've watched him across this season, looked at last season, the, the bits and pieces that he's had. Um, we see an exciting prospect, you know, he's not the, the tallest of players, but in the modern game, he, he's short and robust and very hard to, to tackle with good footwork. So we see him um, in the attacking side of the game, having a, a lot of skill, a lot of ability. He's got a good defensive brain on him. He, um, from, from Gethin's point of view, he, uh, he likes what he's saying. Um, and, you know, we, we're going to see him on the biggest stage um, against South Africa where he was a country of his birth. So I know uh, he's got family flying over and um, it's going to be a big occasion for him. So we're going to learn a lot. And he's going to learn a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Ashok Mohamed from Cape Town. Um, you know, you've been speaking glowingly about the box so far and that they beat the All Blacks, but they lost one in Cardiff in 2013. And they've lost their last four matches in Cardiff. So, um, uh, Wales, the particular side there, you now with your coaching group and, and your mentality, uh, do you think uh, you guys should approach it, stick to that sort of lot of uh, uh, kicking and, 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 and the tight defence and that kind of style? Or do you want to stretch your spin box? We probably want to do a mixture, really, because there'll be times in the game where the, you know, when you've got a world class defence coming at you the way, um, the South African defence pressure side, we, we've got to respect that. And uh, I think if we just move ball willy-nilly, as you saw against the All Blacks at times, we were caught man and ball. Um, so, look, we've got to be smart in, in picking our options. Um, we've looked at that so far this week, and we've got another session this afternoon, and we're looking at our options and going through those in training. So I think um, we've got to be good enough to be able to, um, you know, play the same sort of tactics as South Africa at times, but also... Um, look to move some ball and try to get it um, and create some some space. So a bit of a mixture, I would say. So considering that, that record that the box have lately in, in Cardiff, would you say uh, you you guys should take the underdog stack or do they have the underdog stack? Or do you want it? <laughs> look, I think um, if you're realistic about it on paper, um, we will be the underdogs. Um, you know, there's no doubt about that. Um, the fact that we're playing at home is massive for us. Uh, we love playing at home. The fact that we've got a crowd back, um, you know, last week, the players were just, uh, one thing they were talking about was the difference, just coming into the ground, seeing the sea of red, um, the atmosphere in the ground, uh, and then the support of, of the fans goes a long way to pushing players. Um, on to be bigger and better things, and, and we're certainly going to need that this weekend. Look, we'll go in as underdogs, but um, at the end of the day, it's uh, you know 15 players going out giving their all, and um, we expect that from from the 23 that are going to represent Wales this weekend. Wait, can I just clarify one thing? Sorry, you mentioned that injury you suffered as a player. Was that the one that ended up retiring you? No, that was another knee. Um, okay. But since then, no, I, I have had one uh, very similar. So it was it was an accident, but um, it is uh, not a pleasant uh, injury to have. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks. The next section will be Welsh language, so we'll go.